In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a database using RDS and then connect that database from an EC2 instance. So let's say you've set up your own relational database like MySQL on an EC2 instance and you're managing absolutely everything. So that means the operating system, the database and updates to both of those things, backing up the database and replicas, redundant databases and failover in case anything goes wrong, scaling a database, which means not only scaling the storage but also scaling the processor because because databases take up processing power and storage. And you've got to make sure that nothing ever goes wrong at any point and you lose any amount of data because it happens to be the most important part of any application. We could lose some code and rewrite that code, but if you lose data, you kind of so instead of actually hosting our own database and managing everything to do with the database, we can use a database service that handles all of those complicated tasks, all of those important tasks for us. And then we can just focus on writing the queries and actually accessing the data from the database. So I'm in the AWS console. And before I go and create a new database, I just wanna set up some of the networking for that database first. So I'm gonna go into VPC first, just to set up a security group, uh, which is the firewall for the database. So I'm gonna go scroll down to security groups and I'm just gonna create a new security group. And this is gonna be the virtual firewall for the database that we set up using RDS. So uh, I'm just gonna call this, I don't know, my RDS database for now. Um, I'll just leave that. And then uh, we have to select the VPC. So this is just gonna be the VPC where we're gonna keep all of the infrastructure for this application. So the EC2 instances that are gonna to connect to the database should go on the same VPC. If you have a custom VPC, make sure you select that. Uh, if you haven't created any VPCs, then the default VPC, which I have here, is gonna be absolutely fine. Uh, and then I'm just gonna add a single rule here. And that is that I want to be able to connect on port 3306. That's the MySQL port because I'm going to end up setting up a MySQL database. Uh, and I'm going to temporarily allow this from anywhere. So any computer on the public internet can connect to this database. And this is just so I can easily set up the database, add uh, a user, add a database, add tables. Uh, then once I've set up the initial state of the database, uh, I'll make this more secure and only allow access from instances within the VPC. Um, so I'll allow this from anywhere for right now. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just create the security group. Nope, I have to give it a description. RDS database for a video. So now that I have my security group, uh, I'm going to go over to RDS. Like I said, I'm going to be setting up a MySQL database using RDS. When I set this up, I have the option to create database replicas uh, across multiple availability zones within my virtual private cloud. So before we actually set up a database, we need to tell RDS uh, which availability zones it can use for this specific database. So we can come down to subnet groups and create a database subnet group. Uh, let's go with my theme here, my database subgroup. Um, for the demo. And this has to go on the same VPC that we used before. Um, so either your custom one or just the default one like I'm using here. Uh, and then we get to select the availability zone. So right now I can select between US West 1A and 1C. Uh, so I'm just gonna select both these. It has to be at least two availability zones. So if 1AZ goes down, uh, your database can still be running. Um, so yeah, that's good. And then select some subnets from these. Um, and that's it, I think. We just create, yeah. So we now have a subnet group. It's just to specify which subnets in the current region, uh, which availability zones and subnets in the current region the database can use when it's setting up or replicating a database. Um, so now that we've got both of those set up, I can go into databases here and create a new database. And if you want to uh, back up your database to S3, you can, and then you could restore from an S3 backup. Uh, we're just gonna create this from scratch. And we're gonna go through the standard create option. And the engine types here, we have six different types. Uh, there's Aurora, I'll come back to that in a second. There's MySQL, Maria, Postgres, Oracle, and Microsoft SQL Server. And I think MySQL and Postgres, they both have a, uh, oh no, they don't. Only MySQL has a free tier in North California. So some of these you're able to get uh, in the free tier, which means you can actually use the database uh, for a whole year just for free. Um, some of these don't. So does Maria? 
Oh, Maria does. All right, so my SQL Maria you can actually use for free for a little while. So we can use any of these databases or we could use Amazon Aurora, which is a Postgres and MySQL compatible database engine that is actually uh, built by Amazon. So supposedly this is supposed to run uh, a little bit faster, a little bit better, um, and is being customized to run specifically on the AWS hardware. Um, but again, they don't have a free tier, so I'm not going to use that today. But if you are using MySQL or Postgres, you might want to consider using Aurora uh, instead of the standard MySQL and Postgres options. I did notice, though, I went to set up a MySQL instance once. The versions of MySQL are lower, a few behind. So the highest you can go on Aurora is MySQL 5.7. But if I set up a MySQL instance, I can go for one of the later versions, like 8.25 which, um, you know, might not be an issue. I tried uh, using a query that had a JSON array ag in it and that isn't available in 5.7, but. All right, so we're gonna select MySQL as the engine. Uh, I'm gonna go for 8.0.25, just the latest version that I can select here. Uh, and there are different templates that we can start from. So there's a free tier and this sets up all the settings so that we can use it free uh, for the first year. There's the dev test tier, which is set up for testing. So you get a little bit less storage and a little bit of a less performant environment. And then production is set for production, all the settings that you might want. So this is gonna be the fastest and have the most amount of storage by default. And I can actually select one of these and scroll straight to the bottom past all the settings. And you can see the total price per month that this might cost you. So a production RDS with the default production settings, I would be 940 USD and we'll go through the settings in a second. Uh, the dev test, so this is just tweaking a few of these settings here, less storage, um, less memory and everything, and that could be uh, 130 a month, US dollars, and then just to be safe, let's select the free tier, and yeah, that's free, this is what we get for free, and these are the default free settings. So if we come through these settings, let's just uh, select production. Um, we can identify it, we can set up a user and password, and here is some of the interesting stuff. So we can choose what kind of instance the database is run on, and depending on how much uh, RAM, how many CPUs, what kind of networking we're doing, uh, we can pay less or more here. So, so that's something that we have control over here. Actually, I'm gonna go to the larger settings, see how much this will cost. Uh, then we have the storage type. There are three types, magnetic, which you should just ignore, general purpose SSD, which is just standard RAM. Uh, it's what you're gonna end up using in most EC2 instances, and this is gonna be a little bit cheaper. Or you have provisioned IOPS SSD, and this is just gonna be the fastest, and you'll be able to tweak some settings to make it even faster, even better if you want. Uh, and then there's a storage auto scaling option and if we select this i can uh, i'm actually going to go to the general purpose to look at this yeah so i can allocate 20 gigabytes of storage for this database but if i enable auto scaling if we start to come close to that 20 uh, aws will actually scale the database for us to a certain maximum so uh, all this kind of scaling stuff can be handled for us, which is nice. So the next option is availability. So we can have a standby instance, an exact copy of the database in a different availability zone. So if something bad happens in an AZ, uh, we can quickly switch over to the other database instance without any downtime. It also means that when updates and patches need to be installed, uh, you can take an instance down and then point to the standby instance. And again, you'll have minimal or zero downtime because you've always got a database instance ready to go that's an exact copy. Um, so I wouldn't do this in development or uh, the free tier, I don't think you can, but uh, here we could select that. And then you've got a few more options for networking and then at the very bottom is the price. <laughs> With my updated instance type, it's now $8,700 every single month but maybe worth it because what's the cost of data? All right, so I'm gonna scroll back up to the top and I'm gonna go to the free tier and this will make everything a little bit cheaper. So I'm gonna leave all of this, um, actually let's tweak these. So database instance identifier, let's just call this my DB one maybe. Uh, the master username, so this is the root user that can log into the database and start creating databases, creating users. Um, so this is what we're gonna log in first to actually set up our initial database. I'm just gonna have it auto-generate a password for me. Um, for the free tier, I think we only have one option here. Yeah, uh, so that's what makes it free. So we're gonna go for one CPU, one gig of RAM. Um, provisioned IOPS SSD, yeah, we'll just leave that. I'm not even gonna come close to 20 gigabytes. Um, no, I don't want provisioned IOPS, I want general purpose. There we go. And uh, it won't create a standby instance for us because that wouldn't be free. I'm gonna go for the default VPC. That's where I set up the security group and the database subgroup. Uh, and there it is, the selected one. So this is the subnet group that I made just a little bit earlier that will put it on multiple availability zones. 
Um, I do want to enable public access right now, but some of these settings can be changed later on. So I'll come in once I'm done setting everything up and I'll stop allowing public access because I'm gonna be uh, connecting to this database over the private network instead. And then I'm gonna choose an existing security group. And again, that one I just made. I like to make this stuff ahead of time just so it's a little bit easier than having to do it all in the same thing. Um, so my RDS database, there we go. Uh, availability zone, I could say I would prefer it in 1A or 1C, but I honestly don't care. So I'm just gonna leave that. And then we could change the port, but I'm gonna leave that as 3306. Uh, we can use standard password authentication. And I could set up an initial database name, but I'm actually gonna do all of this uh, through the terminal later on when I log into the database. Uh, I won't enable backups because this is just for such uh, a small test that I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, we can enable more for monitoring and logging, which you should probably do if you're gonna be developing or put this in production, uh, but I'm gonna leave all of that unchecked. Um, we can enable auto minor version upgrade. So when it knows that there's a update to the database, it will take our instance down and then install the updates at some point. Uh, so I'm gonna enable that. Um, I will not give it a maintenance window. So really it will just do this whenever it sees that there isn't much traffic to the database, but we could have a maintenance window that would be good set at a time where there's minimal or no traffic coming to the database. Uh, and I'm not gonna enable delete protection because I'm gonna delete this pretty soon. So that's it, we can just leave all of those settings like that and I'm gonna click Create Database and this is gonna set up the entire service. It's gonna take a couple of minutes, uh, but it will set everything up and once it's all set up, we can connect to this database uh, from a MySQL client and start playing around with things. So my database is now available. So I'm just gonna click on the identifier and I need a few things right now. So I need the endpoint. That's how I'm gonna access the database. That's just the uh, URL to it. The user and the password. I think the user is admin. There we go, connection details. The user is admin and the password is this. And apparently this is the only time I will be able to view this password. So if I close that, I shouldn't be able to keep viewing it, but I can, so it's kind of lying. Anyway, uh, so I have MySQL installed on my Mac. Uh, so I am just going to log in using the terminal here, or you could use like MySQL Workbench or whatever. Uh, so the host is gonna be that endpoint, there we go. Uh, the user is gonna be admin and the, oh, I need a password. The password is gonna be this one. So I'm now logged into RDS. This is the database cluster I just created. So now I get to treat it just like I would treat any other MySQL database. Uh, so I'm going to create a new database called Lord of the Rings. I'm gonna create a table called characters and I'm gonna insert a bunch of characters into that table. There we go. Um, and again, it's just standard MySQL, so should be able to do something like that. Let's just select the names. I said, so there we go. So I'm just in MySQL. And this is currently uh, set up in the dev environment. It'll be free for a year or until my account goes out of the free tier. Um, and it's accessible over the public internet. So I can connect to it from my laptop. I can connect to it from a server like running in Heroku or anywhere on the internet. And if you're just setting up a database for development and you're having to connect to it, uh, not from AWS, um, this is where you're kind of done, right? You can just now start using this, playing around with this. And at some point you want to set up a production database and increase the security a little bit probably. So since I'm going to host my app on AWS using an EC2 instance, I'll show you the next steps that I would go through. So uh, first is I don't actually want to access this database as the admin user. They have too many privileges. So I should create a brand new MySQL user. And since this is going to be on an EC2 instance, I can put it in the same region and the same availability zone. So I'm going to go back to VPC here and I'm just gonna check the IP address CIDR block for the current VPC I'm using, and that's just the default VPC, so if you haven't made one, it'll be the same for you. So any instance on this VPC is gonna have an IP address that starts with 172.31. So this is important because now when I create a new user, in this case, I'm gonna create a user called Frodo, this is the MySQL user, I can say that Frodo can only connect from 172.31 instances. So this user can only log in from the private instances. So I'll just copy this and paste it in. Uh, of course, that doesn't add enough security. So um, I can still connect to my MySQL instance. It's still on the public internet. So there's two more things I wanna do. If I'm back in RDS, uh, I'm gonna modify my database cluster. So now that I have it completely set up, completely good, ready to go, I never wanna be able to access it over the public internet again. I want it to be private. I want it to be only accessed by my EC2 instance application uh, over the private VPC network. So I'm gonna take this off of the public internet. Uh, I'm just gonna scroll down. 
Where is that option? Uh... Yeah, there we go. So not publicly accessible. So this will now only be accessible on the VPC. And then I'll continue modify DB instance. It's going to do it on the next maintenance window. So I'm actually going to disconnect here. Uh, and then this should, I don't know, maybe a minute or two. Um, and while that's happening, uh, back in my VPC window, I'm going to go to security groups again. And there was the security group we set up at the beginning for the database. And that allowed access on port 3306 from anywhere on the public internet. So I'm now going to change this. I still want to allow access on port 3306 so we can still connect to the database, but only over the private network on this current VPC. So 172. I think it was 31 slash 16. Um, and now I'll save those rules. So now I'm only going to expose that new user I created that can only access it from that IP range. The security group is only going to allow it from the IP range and the database has been taken off the public internet. So now it's going to be really difficult for someone to actually hack into this database instance. And I've already set up an EC2 instance uh, right here. So we don't have to wait to set that up. It's just a standard Amazon Linux 2 EC2 instance. So I'm just going to SSH onto this thing. And I've already installed Node because I'm going to show you how to set up a really basic Node script that just connects to the database just so we can see that it's actually working. And I think I put in maybe the wrong IP address there. There we go. OK, so I have Node installed. Awesome. Oh, that's all right. There we go. Uh, so I'm just going to go to npm JS and look at how I connect to a MySQL database. Uh, so I'll install it and then I'm going to just copy this code snippet. So OK. All right, so I'm going to import the library. I'm going to set up the connection. So here, the host is going to be uh, just that URL that I copied before that connects to the database instance. The user, you don't want to use the admin user ever in your application. Um, in fact, these should be stored in environment variables, not in the code. But now I'm just going to hard code it. Uh, so the user, I think, was Frodo. And the uh, database is Lord of the Rings. And the password was what password did I give? Oh, my new password. one. I always use that for all my passwords. So now I've got that set up and then I'm just going to select, uh, yeah, I'll just select the name from, oh, what did I call that table? Characters, I think. Characters. Characters? Yep, yeah, characters. Uh, and then we will uh, only log out the results. There we go. OK, so I have this node script set up that should access the database. Uh, if we set everything up correctly, I should be able to access it from here, from the app, and not from my laptop, which would be nice to see. And for details on how to actually set up an EC2 instance, I'll link a video in the description. So the database, it looks like it might. Yeah, there we go. It's uh, done with its modification. It's now available again. So if I run this script, hopefully we should just see a bunch of yay names come out from the database. So that app just connects to the database privately got the data by running the select statement. Nothing special there, but it does show that I'm now able to access this database uh, normally from an EC2 instance. And if I try and run that same MySQL script again to connect from my laptop over the public internet, this should now not work, even if I enter the correct password. Um, it won't even be able to connect. It's just going to hang there and it's going to time out at some point. I don't know why I even entered the password. It's not even going to try, but I've now secured that a little bit better. Do remember that if you set up an instance that isn't in the free tier, you really should remember to destroy it when you're done because these can add up to a lot of money if you leave these running. And if you use the free tier and you run out of your free credits, you'll definitely want to tear it down. If you're not using these things, make sure you tear them down. If you leave an EC2 instance running for like a month, you pay six bucks. You leave one of these running for a month and you could be uh, owing a couple hundred dollars. So um, if you're not using the database, yeah, delete it. I'm going to delete this one right now. And that's it for this video, but make sure you stay tuned for more videos on cloud computing. Yeah.